Hi guys and welcome back. So today's video is going to be a little bit of two parts. First, I'm going to talk about how I like to clean up my sketches for when I want to work on them digitally. And the second half is where I'm going to talk about why this is such a great method, in my opinion, for when you're first starting out working digitally or with a new tablet. So first things first, let's get right to how I like to clean up my sketches because there's a lot to talk about with not a lot of time. So first things first, I take photographs of my sketchbook. I like to take photographs and here I just crop out the areas that's not the sketch and get rid of those. And I straighten it up so that it is perpendicular to the picture plan that I'm working on. And once I have that done, I move on to actually just cleaning up some of the areas in the sketch that I don't want to keep. So for example, I drew her arm in a different position and that stained the paper. So I want to get rid of that area and the tool that I absolutely love using for when I'm cleaning up areas like this is actually called the spot healing brush. I had to look that up to make sure I said it right. It's just a little band aid, and it works amazingly well. It's very intuitive. It's uh, it, what it does is it looks at the stroke that you actually put down and it finds what's different about it and fixes that so that it's more homogenous with the rest of the stroke. So when I use this tool, I get the best results when I do brush strokes that have a highest ratio of the texture that I want to emulate and the smallest of the area that I want to get rid of. So I make sure that when I do those brush strokes, I'm kind of doing it across the sketch. So I have most of that paper and a little bit of the sketch. And I just use that tool and knock out most of the areas where I drew it wrong or I got rid of it. Also that sketch over on the right side of the paper and I just get rid of that and it just works beautifully and it really does do a great job of showing that texture that I want it to show. Uh, but there's a few areas that I actually need to bust out my clone stamp tool where it, it has a little bit of a funny effect with the healing brush. So I just take that and I get rid of any other areas that I need to fix up. And that is the point that I go in to start cleaning up the contrast of this. So the paper is obviously much darker than I want it to be. And the sketch itself isn't dark enough. So I use the curves tool in this time and I just play around with that, tweak it until I get it to the way that I want it to. It's great for getting those broad strokes of fixing the values that you have going on with your sketch. So I get that mostly right. And then I actually end up going in with the brightness and the contrast and I bump up the brightness and the contrast so that they're nice and sharp sharp and they distinguish each other from each other. So a lot of these are actually not really, they're kind of redundant where I don't necessarily need every single step, but I actually like using multiple tools and build up on that in a way so that I finally get to an effect that I really love and I like, and I feel controlled over that. So I use that and I believe that that's when I make this from a blue sketch into a black one. And that's really easy. You just go up to image adjustments. And then I think it's, uh, color and brightness, maybe color saturation. It's called something like that. And you just click on it and you drag the saturation slider all the way down to like zero so that it's completely black. Whatever thing, whatever color is there is no more. It's only black and white. And that makes it ready to really start working on it. Oh, and I did actually end up deciding that I wanted to kill the texture in the background. So I went through and I erased all of that out around her and I left the texture within her. That's because the lines were just so close that if I were to get in there, it would one, take a long time. And two, it would take a lot of the character out of the sketch itself. So by cleaning up the background, it gave more contrast to her figure and let her stand out more and made it look a lot cleaner while still having that energy and that more hand done textured traditional look to it, which is what I wanted since it is a traditional sketch. So I cleaned that out. I just erased it out and I actually did go in and I took a soft brush that had the opacity set down so that it was pen pressure. And I just lightened some areas like on her face and areas that I knew that I wanted it to be a little bit more highlighted. And the very final step that I take for this is I set that layer to multiply. What that does is it takes the whites and makes them see through and keeps the darks. So the blacks you can still see and the whites you don't. This is great because the areas where I had erased the background, I didn't get exactly right up to the sketch, but this allowed me to, just so you wouldn't even see that little extra border. So it still looked very clean once I did that. And I do end up adding a value in the background. And once you add that in the very background and that top layer is set to multiply, you won't even see those little white edges. So it works really great for this kind of a thing where you want the darks to show. 
Oh, and I think that that finally takes us pretty much through the way that I like to clean up my sketches. I know that I kind of went through that really fast. So if you have any questions or clarifications or things that I did not explain very well, please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to be a little bit more clear or explain things better if that needs to happen. But yeah, this is one thing that I actually would really like to do more of because I, I don't actually bring my final sketches into completion enough. And that's what's so great about digital is that I can do that very easily as opposed to needing to transfer sketches over and then very carefully watercolor them or whatever. This allows me to very actually quickly move on from a sketch phase into a more colored finished element. And all of this editing and cleaning up, it actually went really, really fast. It was probably like maybe 15 minutes of cleaning up and the biggest, the bulk of this time was actually getting in there and cleaning up and erasing the background where I had to very carefully outline her. So this is a really very quick and easy kind of a method to get to where you can start cleaning things up and working on them. But the reason why I think this is such a great way to start working when you're working Tra not, not traditionally, I'm tripping on all my words. When you're starting to work digitally for the first time is because a lot of times when you're starting to work digitally, you're not as attuned to how to use it yet. Your hand motions aren't the same because it's not the same as just drawing right on a sketchbook, especially when you're using a non-screen tablet, which is what I started on and I used for probably almost a decade, I think. And that's what most people start on is those tablets where you're drawing on that and you're looking up at your screen. And it can be a really weird feeling when you're first starting and it feels really unnatural and it can be a little bit frustrating when you want things to be really, really refined or to have that precision. And I know there's a lot of people who probably start using their tablet and they feel great about it and they can get that precision right off the bat. But for me, I didn't have that. I struggled with it and then I decided to start using this method and this allowed me to really enjoy working digitally, which is the key. If you're not enjoying it, you're not gonna wanna learn it and really figure it out. So when I figured out that this is the method that I liked and it meant that I could get products that I really loved and the final look was something that I was excited about, rather than being something that was kind of discouraging along the way, that made me want to just keep learning and keep doing more stuff. So this is a great segue from working 100% traditionally into working digitally so you can get a little bit of an overlap like that. So I worked like this, like I said, for a long time where I was just really getting used to how to handle the pen, how to transfer what I'm looking at into how do I want to actually move my hand. And as I worked on that, I incorporated more and more steps into the digital side of things as opposed to the, to the traditional side. So after I started doing that, I started working on line work or line work supplement where I would take the line work that I did and then fix it up and tweak it digitally. And then I would start to try to do all of the line work. And then I would start to try to do all of the sketching. And it was just that step-by-step -step process of figuring one thing out and making sure that I, I understood it and I got it. And then moving on to the next one really helped me to be able to learn and to enjoy the process. So this is definitely my favorite way of working when you're first working out is just, it, it does give you that sense of accomplishment because it still feels like your work. It still looks like yours rather than jumping in and it looks kind of foreign because it is a different process. And yeah, it just, it feels really good to be able to jump into something that, that is working. But one thing that I do think that I could have done a little bit better for this piece or fixed up a little bit is her proportions are a little bit off. I think I would have preferred for her body to be a little bit larger in proportion to her head and that arm actually. But the easiest fix that I could have done is I could have taken that one arm that was a little bit too long and I could have taken the lasso tool, circled it, and done free transform on that and just shrunk it down a little bit more. So it was a little bit more proportionate to her body and just had her have a little bit larger of a head in proportion. But overall, I'm pretty okay with this one. I, I like how she looks. I like the pose and I like the energy. So that is one thing that I could have, and it actually is pretty easy. Free transform is really useful tool. So I could have fixed it, but it is kind of, it is what it is. And I am kind of okay with her having like this really weirdly long arm. Cause I think it kind of fits with the weird, like bat person look to her. So 
overall, I'm happy with it. There's always things to fix. And that's one of the things that I like to take note of is what steps could I have done that could have made it better. But that is pretty much it for this piece. And uh, I just loved getting back into the way that I loved working originally. It was definitely kind of like a blast from the past of working through the same problems that I did when I was first starting out. And I loved that because it's, it's just really fun to be able to look at where you've come and take a look back at how I used to work. So I probably will do a lot more coloring of my own uh, sketches because that was, it was really fun. It helped me connect with my sketchbook on a deeper level than what I'm used to. So yeah, I enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions. Also, I have an art shop down below if you wanna check out the link in the corner of this video or down in the description where I have lots of prints and originals and buttons if you wanna check that out. And yeah, that is it. That's like I said, so I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.